What's up, my friends? My name is Jake, and I'm so glad you're here and ready to dive into some pretty fantastic stuff with me. I get so geeked out about the massive body of water that covers 70% of the world. You know the one, the ocean. I love everything about it. The way it comes in and goes out, the way sand feels between my toes, the mysterious and seemingly dangerous creatures of the deep. But by far, the best thing is how God created all of the beautiful and exciting things about it. And I'm pumped that we're diving into a few of those today. There's so much to learn and explore, and I'm ready to dive right in. One way we can get all of our fins in motion is to play a game. And I've got a super fun one for you. It's called Follow the Pearl. First, you'll see a pearl. Then, we'll hide it in one of our three clams, and they will all start moving. So make sure to keep your eyes on that pearly prize. Those clams will shuffle around, and when they stop, you get to guess which clamshell the pearl is hiding in. This is gonna be so fun! If you're ready, let's count down from three and say shuffle. Here we go. Three, two, one, shuffle! It was so fun! It's amazing that a beautiful pearl is formed inside of a clamshell, which is one of my favorite facts about God's incredible ocean creations. You see, a regular old piece of sand makes its way into the clam, and if it hangs out with the clam long enough, it changes and becomes a shiny pearl. And that actually makes me think of what it's like to follow Jesus. The Bible tells us that Jesus chooses regular people, like you and me, to follow him. And when we hang out with Jesus every day, he changes us, just like the pearl changes. Following Jesus is the best decision anyone can make. So let me hear you say this after me, as loud as you can. Follow. Jesus. Great job. One way to follow Jesus is by worshiping him. Get on your feet and let's do that now by singing.
Great singing. You can take a seat. Let's play Shark, Fish, Crab. You'll have five seconds to choose which sea creature you want to be. You can either be a shark, a fish, or a crab. If your sea creature disappears from the screen, you'll sit down. If you're ready to play, stand up and choose your creature. Round one, here we go. Shark wins that round. Now choose a sea creature for round two. Crab wins. Choose one more time for round three. Shark wins again. Good game, everybody. You can take a seat. Hey, hi, and hello, my friends. The name is Cora. Nice to meet you. Do you ever just love something so much that you can't get enough of it? Like your favorite candy or your favorite hobby, maybe? Well, that's exactly how I feel about the ocean. Sometimes, I wish I could just shrink down to the size of a tiny fish and swim around in God's big, beautiful creation. Well, as you already know, I can't shrink down to the size of a fish, so instead, I spend my time learning everything there is to know about them. In researching the deep blue sea and all the amazing things God has created, I found out that there are certain types of fish that actually follow sharks. When you hear sharks, you're probably thinking But there are actually a few different types of species that not only don't get eaten by sharks, but catch this, they're friends. Surprising, I know. I think Bruce was onto something all those years ago. These special chosen ones are called pilot fish. They actually become the shark's best friends and the sharks welcome them along for the ride. This is because sharks and pilot fish have a mutualistic relationship, which simply means they both help each other out. The pilot fish keep the shark's body and teeth clean from harmful parasites and the leftover food that could still be hanging out in there after dinner. And in turn, the sharks offer protection to the pilot fish. But pilot fish aren't the only ones who have made friends with the sharks. There's another type of fish called remora or suckerfish, which are known for attaching themselves to the sharks and other large marine animals. Suckerfish have a flat oval sucking disc on the top of their heads that allow them to hitch a ride wherever its host may be heading. Next stop, New Zealand. Can you imagine just swimming on up to a big old sea living carnivore and taking the chance that he might be your new best friend or he might eat you? Well, that's not gonna happen with these guys. And here's why. The sharks can identify which fish are there to help and which fish are prey just by looking at them. And it might sound a little crazy to some, but I actually get it. See. When I started following Jesus, I was a lot like those little fishies. 
I was a bit unsure because I didn't quite know what was ahead of me. But I knew one thing, Jesus called me by my name. He met me exactly where I was and he's taking me on the adventure of a lifetime. I don't always know where we're going or what lies ahead, but here's what I do know. Jesus is always with me, right beside me. Though sharks and fish may think they're pretty close, but I've found a best friend in Jesus that's stronger than any current you're gonna find in the deep blue. Following Jesus is the best decision anyone can make. Try it and see. That was fascinating. Can you believe that there are fish who are not only not afraid of sharks, but who actually follow their every move? Cora always helps us to understand more about how everything in creation points us to Jesus. That reminds me a lot of this guy from the Bible named Peter. Here, you guys check this out. God's story. Peter fishes for men. So part of God's story is about a guy named Peter, and it goes like this. Actually, hold it right there. Peter's real name was Simon. He lived in a place called Capernaum where he had a wife and worked as a fisherman. Simon was just a normal guy, but his life was about to change forever. See, Simon was fishing one day, like usual, when Jesus got into Simon's boat. He taught some people who were standing around. Then he said to Simon, go out into deep water. Let down your net so you can catch some fish. Simon had been fishing all night without catching anything. The last thing he wanted to do was go back out into deep water. But since Jesus told him to do it, Simon obeyed, even though it didn't make any sense. And guess what? He and all the other fishermen caught so many fish that their boats began to sink. When Simon finally got back to the shore, he fell to his feet in front of Jesus. He realized Jesus was not just a great teacher. He was God's son and the rescuer God had promised. Jesus said, don't be afraid. From now on, you will be catching men. Jesus wanted Simon to know that now that he knew who Jesus was, he could tell other people who Jesus was too. In fact, Jesus gave Simon a new name, Peter. It means rock, because Jesus would use Peter to build his church. Sometimes we think of a church as a building, but really, it's people who follow Jesus. And just like we might use rocks to build a church building, Peter was one of the very first people to follow Jesus and show others how to follow him too. And that's part of the story of Peter. So, in case you missed it, here's the quick version. Simon was a normal guy. He lived in Capernaum. He was a fisherman. He met Jesus. Jesus told him to go to deep water. Simon obeyed. He caught fish! He realized Jesus was God's son. Jesus said Peter could tell others about Jesus. He called Simon Peter. And that's a part of God's story. The day Peter met Jesus changed his life forever. After that miraculous catch of fish, Peter knew that Jesus was God's son. So he started following Jesus by spending time with him, obeying everything he said to do, and telling others about him. And that's exactly what it looks like for you and I to follow Jesus too. Okay, I wanna see if you can remember some things we talked about today. So I have a couple questions. What did Peter realize about Jesus? A, that Jesus was a fisherman, B, that Jesus was God's son who loved him. C, that Jesus liked boats. Or D, all of the above. It's B, Jesus is God's son. Jesus loved Peter and he loves you too. Okay, time for the next one. What does it mean to follow Jesus? A, spend time with him. B, obey him. C, tell others about him. Or D, all of the above. You got it. All of those are ways that you and I can follow Jesus. You guys, today has been so much fun, and I hope you'll come back next week. Before you go, let's pray together. Jesus, you are awesome. We know that following you is the best decision we can make. Show us how we can follow you every day. Amen. It's time for me to go. But the fun's not over yet. Check this out. Get on your feet. It's time to sing. Now I'm saved, oh, 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 now I'm
great job. We had the best time diving into what God wanted to say to us today. You can take a seat.